Hi everybody, Lars Christensen here, ready to share with you what's new with Cam with the Infusion 360. So in this release, I really gotta thank all of you people who take the time to post up to the forum and to the idea station because the developers uh, in this release really kind of like narrowed down on a lot of those and they closed over 60 tickets. Now, some of those things were small, minor things, but some of them were fairly big and complicated. They actually went in and uh, did some tweaking to the cam kernel, what is like the brain or the spine of the software. And they did some things with some gouging in 2D, with adaptive, and also with turning. Now, talking about turning, uh, they really focused on that and uh, added some really good improvements to that. So uh, let's take a look at that. So the first one I want to show you here is that if we go into this profile cut right here and we go in and edit this operation, go into the passes tab, you will see that the stock to leave have now been split up. So now you can do both radial stock to leave and actual stock to leave. And well, that's because sometimes you want to leave more stock on the diameter than you want on the length of the part. Now, of course, splitting this uh, stock to leave into two separate settings is only done on settings where it makes sense. So like this one, it does it on the profile, it does it on the standard grooving operation, it does it on chamfering operations. Now, another thing that the developers added for this release uh, is occurring both in a single groove, like you see right here in a standard multiple step down groove and in the parting option. And that is that in the passes tab, you now have a allow rapid retract. What this will let you do is have a rapid retract out with a G00. Now, another thing that is probably worth showing now we're inside of a parting operation, if you are using the use constant surface speed uh, for your parting operation, the development team fixed the issue that was with using a reduced feed rate. So this option here, normally used as a G96, where you can slow down the feed rate as you're getting closer uh, to the center of your part. Now, talking about feeds and speeds, another thing that was kind of nice added here, if we go into a mill tool and we edit the tool, going over to the feeds and speeds tab, uh, we had a nice function in HSM works and in Inventor HSM, where when you change your spindle speed, your ramp speed would change with it until you decided to go down and individually changing uh, this value then that would not be the case anymore. But now that have also been added to Fusion, just one of these small things that just makes life a lot easier. Now, I know some of you guys have already been playing around with adding CAM to things that have been through the mess workspace and adding CAM to things that have been through the sculpting workspace. The developers did some tweaking to kind of that relationship or collaboration in this release. Definitely make sure that you take that for a spin, especially if you haven't already. Now, in this update, the contour selection tool also got some tweaking. And I know that some of you guys are familiar with this tool, but I also know that other people are not so familiar with it. So I just want to give you a quick demonstration of it. If I want this end mill to follow the bottom of this edge here, you will see that when I go into select it, that by default, it will select one of the rectangular feet that resides under this part. The trick is that after you select, you go back again and you will see that it turns from blue to red when I hover my mouse over and re-left click to select it. Now I will get this selection tool that will open up and now it's just as easy as walk around and just select the edges that I want the contour to follow. And just like that, we have selected all the way around. And when I hit the green plus sign, we have now get that ads projected down. So if you did not know about the selection tool, I hope I just made your day. Now, another thing that was fixed in this release is in regards to the probing. Did you know that Fusion 360 had that? Well, in the probing tool in the past, there was an issue that when you went in and selected your Z depth, 
to the Z surface, the depth would only stay to the top. It would not touch the bottom surface. Of course, you don't have to worry about that anymore. That have all been straightened out. Now, I would also like to send a thank you to Seth Medor on the forum for making us aware about this little issue. In the past, if you used our contour selection tool, like we just used before, to select a singular edge to machine on, and you use the stock contour option to make a bigger stock with, for example, a sketch geometry, as I do here. When adding the roughing operations in here, you will see that in the old version, the lead out look fine, but the lead ends were cut short. Well, thanks to Seth for making us aware of this, the developers jumped in and they got that totally straightened out. Now, most of you have probably already discovered all the great posts that is in the drop down inside of Fusion 360. But I want to make sure that you know that down here in the lower left, there is actually access out to the online post library. Now, and all the posts that is out here gets continually updated. So for example, if we go and we look for a Mac 3 mil post, you will see that that was changed six days ago. Or what if you have like a Doosan mill turn, you will see that that was updated 18 days ago. So if you're looking for a post for your CNC machine, definitely go out and check the online post library. So I think that there were some really good improvements in this May release, um, not only within CAM, but actually also some of the things that Bryce and Aaron showed. I mean, uh, the sketch coloring to show you when things are fully defined, that is one that uh, you know I've been waiting for a long time. So really, really good release. And until the next time, back to Bryce and Aaron.